well, fairly late, but it's all right. <laughs> it's good to be alive with you this morning. Um, just wanted to mention real quickly as we're beginning, I'm trying to be, well, I'm trying to be very sensitive and respectful to all that's going on in this world and in our lives together, and, and that includes taking very seriously guidance for proper health practices, also taking seriously folks' concerns and desire to worship. So what, what we're, uh, you may notice today that we're kind of taking another little step, um, and I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable, so we just continue to encourage you with social distancing and masks if you are able to wear a mask. Uh, we're going to do a responsive call to worship. What I'm leading up to, and as we've been uh, sharing with you, we've been putting words to the hymns on the screen the last couple of weeks, uh, mainly to just uh, make it possible for you to be able to uh, join in spirit. And if you want to sing, we encourage you to do that somewhat quietly. Uh, uh, but the other part of that is that way you don't need to use the handles or the Bible so that hopefully we don't have any community spread from one service to the next. So, I don't know, shall we? What else should we say? I don't know anything else. <laughs> All right. I don't even need to be up there. So. Shall we? Yes. I might just mention, and uh, maybe you could mention on the next service, We've been getting a few people that would like to get a brick. It's not too late by any means. So if you are interested in having uh, an engraving on a brick in the front, get a hold of Shelly or get a hold of myself. We've got the form. It's $100. And like I said, we need to contact uh, Honey at Granite. They have an engraver. So I'm not sure how soon they'll do it. But if you're interested, please go ahead and let us know. We have several that have up here lately, which we're excited about. Does so anyone else have announcements that we need to be aware of? All right, well, then there's just one. What? Just one. My grandson lost the one to feature. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right.
lecture. For those of you in Facebook and YouTube land, we're having some technical difficulties. As you know, if I'm not seeing anything. <laughs>
Are there other prayer concerns that we should be lifting up this morning? We've already lifted up a praise for a successful night last night for Austin. Any others? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and rejoice for you. Your goodness, your faithfulness, your mercy. The outpouring of your unmerited favor as a gift to us in life through your Son, Jesus Christ, to bring to us that life which is of you, eternal life. And to be able to enter into that life this day, O oh God, knowing that it's more than about time, it is that relationship that you created us to have with you, to share with one another, that encompasses all of time, but that bears fruit in and through us that goes beyond we thank you, gracious Father, that as we come to you this morning, we approach you knowing that you are the God who is the giver of all good and perfect gifts, the one who has created us for community with you and with one another. You understand our struggles, the weakness, the problems that we face. Jesus bore in his flesh that same image of the man of dust and understands well temptations and difficulties that bears witness continuously through his spirit with us to your presence and your power to overcome. We're grateful, God, our Father, that we can lift to you each of these that are upon our hearts and minds today, our own concerns and those that we share as your family. We pray for your continued healing for those who are struggling. We pray, O oh God, that you would continue to give wisdom and insight to those who are working in the medical community, researchers seeking to find vaccine and treatments, for those who are seeking to offer care and comfort every day, for those on our prayer list, Lord, who we bring to you and ask for your mercy and favor to be known to them in ways that allows them to continue to live and know your presence, your peace, your comfort. We lift up to you those who serve in the military and ask your blessing upon them. Those who are leaders in our community, in our county, and in government at all levels, we pray for them to know your wisdom Seek your insight and direction, and that your spirit would continue to move and work in and through and around all that is taking place. We are glad we can join together in rejoicing and thanking you for simple and profound blessings in life. These things and many more we bring to you in the precious name of Jesus as his church praying as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for your willingness to guide and to lead us. But more importantly, that you truly are God with us. And that you make known to us your perfect and holy purpose. Though at times it may seem hidden, you are always willing to reveal to us your truth. So continue to guide and to lead us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. May God bless and strengthen us. Bring us life and hope through his word. I've had a bunch of experiences, and I'll, I, I suspect you have too this week. But what struck me about some of the experiences I've had this week, and again, I would suspect that if you think about it, especially in light of the gospel text today, many of these experiences can help us to understand why this is so incredibly amazing. That the Word of God, the very thought of God, became a human being, became a man, and lived among us. A couple of experiences that I, uh, well, they're, they're not all ones that I've had. Some of them are ones I've heard other folks talk about. One was an experience that uh, somebody had in uh, uh, sewing, uh, quilting, yarn shop up here, uptown. Um, just in there browsing, looking for some things, and overheard a couple of folks talking about how fearful and how frustrated they were with the way things are. Complaining about government leadership, and going so far as to call certain individuals evil. Uh, talking about the virus and also that that was evil. And just wrestling with frustration and hopelessness. Yet... Then, talking about how they just are going to have to hang on and wait for God to deliver them. Probably not that unusual of a conversation. I participated in a monologue, I was the one listening. I went to the post office. I thought it was going to be a quick trip. And uh, as I was walking out, I, I would confess I slipped in just to the lobby to drop a couple of letters into the slot. And I had my, had my mask in my pocket, but I didn't bother to put it on because I glanced at it. I didn't see anybody, so I just thought I'd pop in there real quick and pop out. And as I was turning to leave, the gentleman said, where's your mask? <laughs> I was right there in my pocket. Of course, he didn't have one on either. Um, and as we walked out the door, that served, I guess, as a segue for him to launch into a 30-minute monologue about all the things that are wrong with the world. And I was, I'll be honest, again, I was constantly looking for a point where I could somehow manage to separate myself and move on. And it, it, it never happened until someone else physically stepped into our space, and, and I don't think they knew they were rescuing me, but, but from my point of view, they certainly were. 
Ah. Uh, and the thing is, I didn't necessarily disagree with a lot of the things that this fellow was saying. I told you earlier that uh, yesterday we had this huge bash over at our daughter's. Um, one of our, her, her sister, our other daughter, made an interesting comment towards the end of the evening as we were kind of doing some cleaning up as the kids were over roasting marshmallows and eating some more after they'd already eaten cotton candy. and They never did get the snow cones that were supposed to be on the menu, fortunately. She made the comment, these kids are spoiled. I was thinking about all of that uh, later in the evening. It was a wonderful day, it really was. It was a lot of fun, which there's, that's a good thing. It's good for us to get together with our families, to rejoice and to have great times. But what I was thinking about was, that's not ultimately what they really need. We'll be on the cotton candy, and they really didn't miss the snow cones since they didn't get them. They didn't need the pinata. They didn't need all the time in the pond swimming or riding around on the ranger that many of them rode around with their uncle. They didn't really need all of the time just hanging out with their cousins because. As you all know, that's ultimately not what life is all about. Even though it may seem like it, especially in the light of the way our society often is structured, we did a graveside service. We, you, you, you all, even though you weren't there, as the church, uh, offered ministry to a family who had connections with this community years ago through family members. A woman that didn't have any close relationships with them anyone anymore, and yet after she had died, the surviving cousin found out that this was where she wanted to be buried, and so we celebrated the promises of God. I take all of that simply to get to the point. The gospel is not about how to have a full and rich material life. The gospel is not about how to have lots of friends and influence people. The gospel is about the unbelievably good news that God is with us. And not just with us as an unseen spirit, because that's been believed by many for a long time, but that God is with us. Having walked the earth, having tasted and seen and suffered and struggled and known joy and gladness as one of us in order to bring eternity, which we were intended to have from the beginning, to us. John's Gospel, a lot of scholars think, was probably the last of the four Gospels to be written. Most of you know that, having read your scriptures, that John's Gospel's different from the other ones in a lot of ways. Sometimes they think that's why, because John, one of the disciples of Jesus, had a lot of time to think about what he wanted to write, knew what the other writers had written about, and even though the basic content of the message of the good news is the same, wanted to address some issues that were important for the church. Then... And they're still important today, as hopefully the stories I briefly told you at the beginning will help us to connect. A couple of things that it seems John was writing about that we know about certainly for true from history is that understanding God 
the one who created us, has always been a bit of a challenge for humanity because we, we ponder, we, I can remember lying on my back on the yard in the summertime staring at the sky and during the daytime as well as at night. And, and we all, we're, we're not unique, we ponder this vastness and so humanity has come up with all kinds of things, but what is unique about our faith expression is that we are told by God's revelation of himself. Yes, God's made himself known to us. Not just a bunch of folks sitting around and pondering and talking and conversing, coming up with their best understanding and agreeing, taking a vote and saying, this is what we're going to teach about God. But that God made God's self known. That's what John is telling us. That from before time, it's hard to translate but the Greek is really saying, but basically before creation, before time existed, the Word, Word was with God. Word was God. That part of God that became the human being, Jesus of Nazareth, was always, has always, Created. The scripture is intentional that we have about linking together creation. The words that John uses are very clearly connected to Genesis. Intending for us to understand that Jesus is divine. But he's also human. One of the things that John addresses in his gospel, takes points to address, is that there were folks, just as there still are today, who because of the issues of life, the evil in the world, the things that they wrestle with, just come to the conclusion that everything is evil and we just have to somehow get through it. And God's going to deliver us and set us free someday. But that's not really the gospel. The gospel is that God is literally with us. That everything is not evil. Yes, there is sin. Yes, there is evil. But that God has come to bring redemption, to change, transformation, new life, so that it's possible for us to know the fullness of what God intended when we were created by the Word. So that we know eternity. Eternity is not just time. Because, of course, it's one of the things that we differentiate. It goes beyond time. It's before. It's beyond all that we can understand. And it's more than just a measure. Eternity is about having that relationship, that community with God. And John is reminding us in the gospel, that's what we know when we encounter the Word who became flesh, who dwelt among us, who was full of grace and truth. That as he came to deal with evil, he also came to reveal to us the life that we can have. One of the issues of that day that the early church was reckoning with was this idea that Jesus wasn't really human. That he was just a spirit that appeared to be real. Because they couldn't 
rationalize how God, who they knew had to be perfect, had to be pure, had to be holy, could possibly have anything to do with a broken world, a world where there is evil. And that's one of the reasons why it seems John, like Paul in that letter to the Colossians, makes the point so intentionally that he really was God, but he really was human. But this wasn't just some shadows and mirrors and lights show. God really was present human form, so that life could be restored, changed, renewed, transformed. Think for a moment, if all that we have is the best that we can grasp and obtain from the world, if we can go through life winning every feature race, if we can go through life getting the best grades, having the best rewards from our vocations, having a wonderful family, all of these things that everyone would hope that they might be able to accomplish and share with others, because it's not just about us. If at that time, like this week, or like all of us have at some time or another, we are at a graveside, and that is the end, if there's nothing else, what's the point? That's one of the other experiences that a lot of us wrestle with from time to time, is that people do come to that place, even young people, where after having been given everything, after having been spoiled, like my daughter said about her own kids and nieces and nephews, after having all the good things that life offers, if that's all there is, sooner or later, we begin to wrestle with hopelessness and despair. The Word of God became flesh, full of grace and truth to dwell among us and to literally bring to us eternal life that isn't about the things that we possess or about the things we accumulate or even the experiences that we manage to have in the course of our days on earth. It includes all of those things, but it ultimately is about life shared with the one who formed us, who knows us better than we know ourselves, who knows how to bring hope and healing and joy into any human life, and who comes into the midst, as John declared, into the midst of our experiences, into our lives of celebration and into our lives of darkness, whatever is going on. It brings light. If the gospel isn't real, when we're beside the bedside of a loved one who no longer can communicate with us, then of what use is it? If the gospel isn't real, then we're celebrating uh, at a wedding, then of what use is it to us? If the gospel isn't real to us when we're going through the motions of everyday life, trying to figure out how to do school and how to figure out how to do business and trying to figure out how to live in community with all the craziness, then of what use is it? John says, it is because Jesus is the Word of God and He is truly with you. And there you find life full of grace 
in truth. A friend who would often say, that God wants to give to us far more abundantly than most of us are willing to ask. He would preface that by referring to Luke's Gospel where Jesus talks about how the Heavenly Father gives to us pressed down, running over far more abundantly all than all that we ask or think. There's not just a pious attitude because as we look at John's gospel what this old man was saying to the church as it reflected on what it meant for him to know Jesus and to know human life he knew God he knew life he knew because of Jesus why he existed Probably, if it's the John we think it was, he died an old man on an island, more or less a prisoner. Not exactly the ending a lot of us would choose. But he died an old man full of life, full of hope, full of assurance, with the presence of God's love and mercy and spirit burning inside him. What do we have to offer? What do we truly have to offer our families, our friends, our enemies, this community, as well as our Heavenly Father? The Gospel tells us that we have offered to us eternal life, through Jesus Christ that will allow us to live a life that will bring joy and pleasure and delight to your Heavenly Father and that will bring to others light in the midst of their darkness not the promise of a good job not the promise but they'll always have lots of friends, but light and hope in the midst of darkness that shall not be overcome, that nothing can take from them. Seems like everywhere I go, regardless of my good intentions or just my hurry to get from one point to the other, there are always folks. There are always folks who are in need of the light and the hope that Jesus makes possible as the Word made flesh. What more could we really offer, folks? What more do we want to be able to offer, folks, than to know God? is to know that God knows them and loves them. Would you pray with me for a moment? Father God, you have promised us, as John has declared to the power of your spirit, who Jesus is, your word that somehow, though none of us can ever really explain it, somehow became one of us, came to give us life, came also to bring us grace and truth, we don't deserve it, we can never earn it, but you want us all to have and to live in that fullness. Help us, Lord, to be reminded throughout our days that this is what the human race yearns for. No, not everyone chooses it. You've given us that freedom to say no, to reject, or to just be so busy we do other things. It's what we really need in order to have life, eternal life. Help us as people who know the love and the light of Jesus.
to find the ways that you make available to us through the doors that are opened each day. To help folks to know this is Jesus. This is the gospel. It's not about vaccines, even though we pray for them. It's not about everybody having a job, even though we would certainly pray for that as well. It's about knowing you and knowing that we are known and loved by you. That you want to set us free for this faithful journey together with you in your church. So grant us this peace, we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you.